Hello everybody, I'm Nick and finally, after 5,632 years, Microsoft has released their Azure Service Bus Emulator. For all of this time, and actually this affected me deeply because I had to do this, if you wanted to run tests, let's say integration tests or staging tests or acceptance tests, you had to spin up a real service bus and that was a massive pain in the end. And that's because you had to provision, you had to manage it, you had to wait for it, the it's just so much trouble, which is something you didn't have to do with AWS because in AWS you have local stack and you can run basically anything you ever need locally or in Docker. So you can just run all of your tests and do everything without needing to connect to the cloud and then provision anything that you might need. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started with setting up the emulator and start publishing and consuming messages. So let me show what I have here. I have a publisher console application, a consumer console application. They're very basic. We're just going to do queue publishing and consuming, but you can use this with topics. You can use it with other things. You can configure it. We're going to see all that in this video. So the publisher is pretty basic. All you have is a service bus client. And in case you're wondering, we're using the azure.messaging.servicebus client for this. And then we create a sender based on the queue name, which I don't have here yet because I'm going to show you how this works. And then a bunch of code on how to run all this. If you want to grab the code for this, it's going to be in the description down below. And we just published a getting started with Azure course for developers. So I'm going to put a link to that in the description down below. And then we have the consumer over here. Same thing as before. We have the client and then we have the processor, same NuGet package. And then we have some consumption code that gets that message and then just publishes it in the console. All of this is demo code from Microsoft because this is not the important thing. We just want to see the functionality of this. Now, normally what you do is you would go to portal.azure, search for service bus, and then try to create a queue, ultimately be charged for it, even though it's a free tier, but depending on your usage, you might not be eligible for that. And then do your magic, do your publishing, do your testing. We no longer have to do that. All you have to do now is use the Docker image that was just published to run the emulator. So I have a folder over here called emulator. I'm going to start with the Docker Compose, which is over here again, provided by Microsoft. So you can have a container here called service bus emulator. We have the image to that emulator, a path to a config file, which we will mount through a volume, which I'm going to show you what's in there in a second. Then we expose the ports. And then as you can see, we're using SQL Server to store effectively the messages we're going to be publishing through service bus. So this has sort of two services you need to run this. So we say that this depends on the SQL edge, this container over here to be running. And then we add the network and give it an alias. And then we do the same thing with the SQL edge. So we have that over here. We give it an alias. We accept the uh, end user license agreement. We set a password and then we say it's part of the same network. And that's the setup on the Docker Compose file. Then what you need is this config.json file, which is a long blob of JSON, which defines anything your emulator will have provisioned when it runs. So we have the namespace for the emulator, and then we have any queues you might want to provision. So I'm going to have a queue called Q1. We have a default time to live over here. So one hour, then we have the duplicate detection history time window. So within 20 seconds, you can detect duplicate messaging being pushed. Then you have a lock duration, which is how long a message will be locked while it's being consumed. Then you're going to have whether you require a session or if you want to even require duplicate detection, you can have forwarding to another queue as well. And then you can have a max delivery count of 10. So a message will be tried to be delivered 10 times before it is dead lettered or upon expiration, which is false, but you can turn this on if you want. And then same thing with the topics, in case you don't know, topics is where you can push messages and then they can be consumed to multiple subscriptions. So you have the topic over here and then you have subscription number one with a filter to say what goes in this subscription and then subscription number two, which has other configuration to be pushed in, and then subscription three, and then the logging type is file. It's very basic and pretty straightforward configuration. It's really everything you will need, especially for testing purposes. And because this is all a NuGet package, you can actually use this in Aspire. So you can have an Aspire.use emulator, so you can have service bus through the emulator in Aspire. But this is a configuration you need. Then you might have noticed that in this Docker Compose, we have a few environment variables over here. All that is being loaded through this dot env file. So you can load your configuration path. So we say that this is the file that has the configuration. It goes here. Then the whether you're going to accept the end user license agreement or not is here. And then the password for the SA user is this. It needs to be at least eight characters and have capital, lowercase, and numbers to be accepted. But once you have all of that, 
all you need to do is go on your terminal of choice and say docker compose up this will create your containers and have them running so as you can see everything now is running and if i go over here now i have my two containers the sql edge which will store all the messages and then the service bus emulator itself which is here and as you can see everything has been now created the subscription the topic and the queue as well if i'm not wrong here it is so everything is set up for us to work now what do you put in the connection string well microsoft is giving the following connection string and again this will be in the code when you download it but we have the the same endpoint connection string service bus the location which is this is the port we're using and then the access key name as well as the access key which is the sas key value you can leave this as it is because we say use local emulator to true and that will override how this works so once we say that here we can take this and we can push it into the publisher as well and then what's the queue well if you remember from our configuration file over here the queue is called q1 so whatever you named it here you want it to be this over here as well so q1 here q1 over here too once you have all that all you need to do is first run let's say your consumer in fact it doesn't really matter because the queue is running so just as a test let's say i'm going to run the publisher first the publisher will publish in a batch three messages just saying message one two and three i can stop this application because really the messages have been published and have been stored if i go here i don't see anything here but they do exist i'm wondering if i can see something here i can't so that is fine but if i go into the consumer now and i say run the consumer those messages have been stored and i can say run consumer and as you can see, received one, two, and three. They were persisted, they were there, and then my consumer run, it noticed it as a normal queue code, and then we consumed them and we wrote them. If I just run the publisher again, what you're going to see is three new messages. So you can use all that now for your integration tests, your local tests, any other acceptance or anything else. Keep in mind, this is not necessarily the real service. It's supposed to behave exactly as the real thing. So it's fine for testing, but if you want to be super careful on an end-to-end -end testing scenario, especially staging testing, then you might want to use the real queue as well to make sure everything works as it's supposed to. But it's meant to be very, very easy to work with. You don't have to configure anything mega fancy. It is a bit more convoluted that I hope to be because you have to have these files. I mean, you don't have to have these files, especially the end file. Uh, but at this point, this is sort of normal complexity if you sign up to the whole Docker, Docker Compose idea. So I'm not too fast about it. But what we get here and the fact that we do get topics, we do get subscriptions is awesome. It took a very, very long time, but it's finally here again. If you want to grab any of this and play around with it, the link in the description down below, you can download all of this for free. But now I want to ask you, is there any service that you wish Microsoft had an emulator for? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.